Hi, everyone. When I was a kid, this family was really popular, the Jetsons. And I watched a lot of the Jetsons, and kids like me saw this future and felt like, well, even though this is fiction, it represents something that we might really see in our future. And for me, what I saw was people living and working alongside technology like robots in a way that made everyday life better. I became a product designer, and I worked on things like cell phones and cameras and vacuum cleaners, but my favorite project was with the Georgia Tech Georgia Tech Socially Intelligent Machines Lab, where I worked on a series of robots named Simon and Curry. This is Curry that you see here. And the idea behind these robots is we were studying how humans might interact with machines in a really human way. So the robots have light, they have sound, they have gestural motions, and People can interact with them using just human voice and approaching them, handing them objects, um, or even gesturing to the robots. And I just loved these projects. It was so exciting to see that people could, like our, my team, could program the robots to interact in such a way that they came to life, even though they're machines. And uh, this is Andrea Tomas from the Socially Intelligent Machines Lab. And um, when I was doing this project and just so crazy about it, my colleagues in the product design world said, yeah, Carla, that's okay. Those are kind of crazy robots, though. What do those have to do with what we do? Designing products for everyday life. And I said, oh my goodness, they have everything to do with that. Don't you see? And I could see a vision really clearly, which was that our everyday objects would essentially become little robots. You see, what was clear was that computing power was becoming smaller and cheaper as it was becoming more powerful, and communication protocols like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi were becoming more prevalent. And this would mean that our everyday objects would be kind of like robots. So I wrote a piece about it for the New York Times. I said, oh, I have to tell people how excited I am about this. And as part of the piece, there was an animated slideshow. I worked with an artist, Katie Turner, and illustrated some of my ideas. So this is a robotic lamp with facial recognition that can chase you around if you don't wake up early enough. This is a bicycle that's connected to GPS, and the handlebars vibrate to let you know which way to turn, and the jacket can light up to let drivers know where you're going. And this is a connected bathroom. So you step on the tiles, it measures your weight, you look in the mirror, and it can read your skin color and t tell your heart rate. And all of that can be tracked and sent to the cloud so that you and your doctor can know what's going on. And these are just, you know, fantasy projects that existed as concepts a few years ago, and now are all in development in one way or another. And even in my career, I've gotten to work on some things like this. Uh, for example, at the firm Smart Design, I worked on a series of connected appliances. A washing machine that can text you and let you know what's happening with your clothing. Washer and dryer can go online, they can know the utility rates so that they run at the most efficient time. This is a, a pregnancy monitor I worked on with a firm in Barcelona called Zinc, and it can let a woman know what's happening inside her belly when she's pregnant and it can track contractions and also send that information to a doctor. And I even got to work on a robot. So when I was at Smart Design, I worked with a firm called Nita Robotics, and I got to apply some of what I had learned working on robots like Simon and Curry at Georgia Tech. So I made sure that this robot was as expressive as it could be, so that we took, took advantage of its movement, we took a, a look at the lights that it made, and also paid attention to the sounds. So the sounds are like a little language. So here's the robot when it wakes up. <laughs> And here's when it says, oh, hello. Here's what happens when something goes wrong. It's trapped under the couch. And here's it going back to sleep. So one thing that I've learned is if you're going to invent things for the future, it's very important to have your hands on the technology, to understand it intuitively. So I created a lab within the firm Smart Designs called the Smart Interaction Lab, and the point is to tinker and create imaginary products. 
So one of the things that we created was the apron that tweets. We call it apron alert. So there's a clasp. When you close the clasp, it sends a tweet to let people know that cooking has started. And then when you open the clasp, it lets people know that the food is ready. So you can come to the table. Another project we worked on is called What's Up Smart. And it's a desktop beacon. So you can turn it and change the color of the light to let people know your status. You can let them know, I'm really busy, don't talk to me, or I'm open for brainstorming, or I'm taking a break, or I'm out of the office. And it also updates that status online so that people in other offices can know what's happening. And then one thing I was very, very fascinated with was 3D printing robots and one thing that we call distributed design. Or you saw a little bit about this with Danit's talk. And so I really wanted to do a designer's project about this. So I created a story and did a children's book. The book is called Leo the Maker Prince. And it's about a young woman and her robot friend who happens to be a 3D printing robot. And all of the objects that are part of the story can be downloaded and printed. So here you see the sheep, and here's some of the characters and musical instruments. Um, and some of the things that are in the book foreshadow what's happening with our future of 3D printing. So there is a robot that can scan your foot and make a custom made sandal that fits you perfectly and lets you leave the perfect footprint so everyone knows where you're going. Mm. There's also a micro factory. So there's a jewelry designer who makes jewelry with math that can be distributed in small quantities. And there is a robot that makes architecture for hamsters. <laughs> uh, it's been very exciting. These projects have been downloaded all over the world, in Shanghai, in Tokyo, in the Netherlands. And it's gotten me to explore not only the machines in front of me, but manufacturing processes and product distribution. And what I wanted to leave you with today is that the future that is just a fantasy right now is going to be your invention playground when you grow up. So have fun. Well, that was just incredible. Um, can I ask you a question? Sure. So the young you who watched the Jetsons, what would you tell her about the future and the present? Well, I would say, young Carla, a lot of these things are going to really happen. For example, robots, you're going to see a lot of them. Some of them maybe not are, going to, are not going to happen. So um, flying cars, maybe not so much. People still have to learn to drive in two dimensions, and we're kind of still messing that up. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.